of the series, I Am My Brother's Keeper. You know, after the death of George Floyd and after the death of Ahmaud Arbery and after the death of so many black folk in the street at the hands of police, police brutality and racism, the Lord gave me this series because I believe, as I was watching YouTube the other day, there was a gentleman, he was probably in his 40s or 50s, and he talked about how we have to save one another. The white man is not going to save us. The government's not going to save us. Uh, the president that's in office don't care nothing about us. And the president that's trying to get elected can't save us. We can only save ourselves. And the answer to all of our woes is Jesus Christ. The answer to all of our issues, all of our problems that the black man deals with in America, even the black-on-black -black crime, it is Jesus Christ. I noticed that Fox News and a lot of the talking heads and pundits and sambos are concentrating on the black-on-black -black crime. And I know black kids have been killed, and I'm not belittling that because black-on-black -black crime, we all know that that should stop. But I wonder what would happen if they did a statistic on white-on-white -white crime. See, you have to understand the direction of the media, what they're trying to do, and Fox News all of a sudden cares about black cares about black lives and said black people are dying because the police are scared and the police are this and the police are that. That's a pile of mess because, you know, I know there's black on black crime. I'm not excusing that. I know that we abort babies. I'm not excusing that. But America has a racial problem. And while other pastors punk out and won't talk about it, while others are sambos and their followers are sambos and people are on, they're sambos on Fox News, they're coons on Fox News, they refuse to stand up for the real issue. I will continue to preach against black on black crime. I will continue to preach against homosexuality. I will continue to preach against abortions. But I will not overlook racism in America. Matter of fact, I want to warn the church because we got some credible information today that there will be some white supremacy initiations this weekend that you brothers need to be two at a time together. The young ladies don't need to be left alone. There's going to be some initiations, some car accidents, and some hangings according to some resources that I received that will, uh, this weekend, they're supposed to do these kind of things. I told security, always watch yourself. I tell you brothers, always watch yourself. Always watch yourself because those five brothers that have been hung from California to Texas, I'm sure five black men didn't hang themselves and kill themselves. That ain't the way we go out. You know, we'll kill each other. We don't normally go out that way. So I want to warn all of you to tell you to always be vigilant to always watch your backs for everybody. But I will never step down from this fight. I heard one of the elders, and I call them elders because they're old. I'm not talking about an ordained elder. I'm talking about an older black doctor in the community. He said the black church is the answer for black folk. He said Wednesday nights, you have Bible study. He says Thursday nights, you should have financial teaching. I'd like to pat myself on the shoulder, the back, and say that we empower people here. We empower your blackness. And, and, and check this out. And I got more white members than the district that I used to belong to. While everybody acting white, I got more white members in my church than the district had. But I'm still not going to overlook black empowerment because my congregation is predominantly black. And I owe you to teach you about Jesus. And I owe you to teach you about owning land. And I owe you to teach you about being financially independent. And I owe you to make sure you leave a name for yourself. There's more to this thing than just shouting and raising offerings and blessing the leaders of certain denominations. I'm so glad that the coronavirus has stopped so many services. And I'm so glad that financially some of these churches that have pimped people for years are struggling financially. I'm so glad that God's people now can keep some of that money in their pockets instead of blessing a man of God every time you turn around. God's got a way. And I told y'all in September and October when I preached this series, The Fleecing of the Flock, I had no idea the coronavirus was coming. But God said, judgment is coming. 
I had no idea so many people were going to die from this coronavirus that were in positions of leadership in the church. But God said judgment was coming. You don't believe me? Go back and look at September, October, November messages. Fleecing of the flock. And I don't, go, I don't claim to be a prophet or none of that. But God says I'm tired of my people being pimped. People are losing membership because God is waking folk up. And in this hour of waking folk up, this microphone sounds some kind of good. And in the, yes, sir. Woo, we got them ready now. And, and in this time of people waking up, God says, I want to use the black man these last and evil days. While other folk are dogging out black people. Let me tell you something about the Black Lives Matter. I'm not a part of that. I wouldn't be a part of it. The only thing that I agree with the Black Lives Matter is the black part. I don't agree with the homosexual part. I don't believe in none of that. Then there's a black and brown organization in Raleigh. Then they had a lesbian, white, female pastor of a Baptist church, I think in Nightdale or Raleigh, and they gave her the spotlight on the local news, and she started talking about racism. Don't compare my racism with your dykeism. Don't compare the racism and the color of my skin with faggotism. We're not black and brown walking together. We're not black and homosexual walking together. And we're not black and white walking together. Uh, because really, with all those white folk marching, there's a whole lot being lost with that. They're the ones destroying statues. But it all comes back on us. And then we have a president who tells Bubba Wallace he ought to apologize. There was a noose found, but I'm not going to defend Bubba Wallace because he wanted to be white so bad that they hung a noose in his station. And he said, stand up here with me, my brothers. <laughs> so I'm not fighting with him because Bubba fighting to be white. Y'all don't like me. Well, this is where we're at right now in ministry. It ain't hate language. I'm not an angry man, but I do have righteous indignation. And you know what? There's a reason to be angry sometimes. Jesus got angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. The Bible says be angry and sin not. When people say, oh, he's so angry, he's so angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. With your lips, with your hands, with anything, be angry and sin not. But when I look at the condition of this world and I know the scriptures, and as I said to you last week, there are things that I've been doing for years, and I don't think that I'm the only person pastor or Christian preacher who feels like this, but many don't. When you start talking like this, you'll normally find this at the Nation of Islam, or you'll find this at a black movement. You won't normally find a black pastor that deals with the empowerment of his people, because most black pastors are too busy trying to be white and too busy dogging us out for everything that's ever happened. You know, whenever a person is beat down continually, when you're beat down continually, you'll never grow. There's nothing wrong with breaking somebody down like weights. You lift weights, you break the muscle down, and you build it back up. But when you're beat down continuously, and you're the reason for your downfall, and you need to understand that America is a great country, and you got to go out there and get it as if everything is level. As if everything is level. You need somebody like me, and God is raising up pastors who ain't going to take your money, who ain't going to have a $1,000 line, a $500 line, a $200 line, but they're going to show you how to put a 1000 in your pocket. So we're going to teach financial empowerment here, but in these last and evil days, according to Psalm uh, 68 and 31, God is going to use the black man as he always has because we ran this joint. And because of sin and wickedness, we lost some power, but we the original man. We the original man. Jesus was black. All his disciples were black. I have no doubt about it with my studies. I pick no bones about it. I serve a black savior. And it's important that you understand that because we have been looking at a white sissy on portraits and statues for years. Amen. Amen. And God says, I'm going to use in these last days. Look at Psalm 67. I said Psalm 68. It's Psalm 68 and 31. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Princes shall come out of Mizram. 
Ethiopia, Cush, shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. I told you that it's hard to find proper commentary on this scripture because all the white commentators decided to leave this null and void because it's a good thing to talk Christian with the Southern Baptists and all of those white folk. But when they see parts of the Bible that they know implies that black people ran stuff, they intentionally will not dissect and dive in. They intentionally leave it out of their commentaries. I'm going to show you, I read it a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to show you how part of the slave trade was based on this scripture. I'm not a Muslim. You don't have to be a Muslim to understand that God used the black man. You don't have to be a Muslim to go to Genesis and see that Adam was created in the Garden of Eden, which is in Africa, the whole land of Havilah, and we'll go back over that tonight. So my goal tonight is to continue to empower you. I once again want to say that all the statues should come down, not just on my opinion, but based on Scripture. I'm going to show you what the Bible says about these graven images that are causing so much problem right now. The rebel flag needs to go down. If you are truly an American, you will have the American flag. You don't need a rebel flag to remind you of the South. And, and it blows my mind that even black people say keep the Confederate flag up. That even black people say keep the white baby Jesus. That even black people say keep the white disciples and everything white because we don't want no trouble. Let me tell you something. If you're living in a time now you're a black person, you don't want no trouble, you might as well go in your house and hide because trouble's coming to us now. You ain't got to go to it. It's coming to us. It's coming to us. My wife walking in the neighborhood today that we were the third house in the neighborhood and white women would turn their back and play with their dogs instead of speak to my wife. They, put, they love their dogs. That's why they kiss their dogs in the mouth, tongue them, and have sex with them and everything else. <laughs> but instead of speaking to my wife, and we were the third people in the neighborhood, instead of speaking to her, you're going to turn their back. Little bony woman. How big is this microphone stand? Don't nobody want you but your husband. I promise you, he cheating. <laughs> Ain't going to turn your back. And then the old white man, when she came by, you know, because white men love black women. That's why all of your light skin in here. Then the white man come by. Amy come by. The old white man told me, don't get old. I'm like, look, man, you better, you better go on and get old and get in a rocking chair, pops. You can be hollering at mine. Hey, man, y'all don't like me. But I'm built for this here. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Princes shall come out of Mizraim. And Ethiopia, Cush, shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. We understand as black folk that if we don't stretch out our hands to God, we're done. I looked at the president, the, the race baiter. The divider of a nation, the good old boy that tells Bubba Wallace to apologize, that pretty much does not have anything for black lives, does not have anything for us. Because if he was any, if he was worth his salt, he would say, as the president of the United States, I stand against racism. He endorsed the Confederate flag the other day. And you got Negroes that follow him. Negroes that voted for him, and he endorsed the Confederate flag the other day. He's as divisive as he can be. All he had to do was stand up there and give a common word. Listen, I don't know what it's like to be black, but I do see the struggles that your people have gone through. And we will do what we can to have peace. But instead, he says, I'm the law and order president. Law and order. And people know the relationship of black folk with cops. Let me just speak for myself. My relationship with cops has never been good, except for a few cop, cop friends that I know. My relationship with the police have never been good because they've always sized me up. They've arrested me for stuff I didn't do. Amen. And they always look at you like something's going on because I'm a big black man. These are facts. This ain't up for discussion. This is me in my skin. This is what I deal with 
constantly, no matter what I'm driving, no matter what my title is, I deal with these things. And I'm afraid that because the media now has shifted to COVID-19, I'm afraid because you didn't even know all three out of four that killed George Floyd, they already met their bond. They're out of jail. Three out of four. You didn't know that because you ain't been watching the news. Because COVID-19 has been killing your mind. What happened to the boy that killed those folk in, in, in South Carolina? We ain't heard nothing else about that. See, see, out of sight, out of mind. This is why I got to keep this stuff before you. The Bible says, as a pastor, I got to keep things before you. If I don't keep things before you, you'll forget. And it's the job of the pastor to keep things before you, not to be a race baiter, not to teach hate, but to tell you the truth. For anybody to really look at us and see how we simply cannot be treated fairly just by the color of our skin by ourselves. You always got to group us with somebody. Group us with the brown. Group us with the homo. Group us with the end. Group us with this. Group us with that. Why, America, don't you like us? I know why. Why, America, don't you like us? It's because we're God's chosen people. It ain't the white Jews in Germany. It ain't the white Jews in Russia. It ain't the Abyssinian white Jews in Palestine. We, black folk, are God's chosen people. Now, if you don't believe that, let me show you again in the Bible. But before I show you that, I want to give you a couple of scriptures as to why statues need to come down. Look at Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And some of y'all can't wait that I get on to a bless me message. Well, you know what? We're in the last days. Go on, buy your house, buy your car, buy you some land and all that. But don't look, this ain't the years of prosperity that the church experienced 25 and 30 years ago when everybody was laughing and they were telling you to get rich. This is a time to gird yourself and be prepared for what's coming. Get stronger with the Lord and tell every black person that you know that they need Jesus. Tell every black man that you know they need Jesus. Tell every black woman you know. Then you tell everybody else. But Jesus came to his own first. And if I don't come to my own first, I ain't doing no social program for everybody else. We're doing social programs for people that look like me. And if everybody else just happens to benefit, they can. But we're not going to change nothing to cater to nobody else but black folk. Y'all might well clap your hand. Oh, oh, God, give me some more folk that are catered to black folk. Because this is what we're going to do. This is the direction of this ministry. We're not giving, I don't care if you got 15 white friends. Don't bring them over here. Because every time they come over here, our brother, I need to talk to you about something that you said. You can't tell me nothing. You ain't sent no money. You ain't raised no offering. You ain't built nothing. Shut up and go back to your church. Pastor, we just wanted to be an interracial church. Well, you build it. Jesus came to his own first. He came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel first. When his people didn't receive him, to them gave he power to be called the sons of God. You got to save yourself. You got to save somebody look like you. Elder Darn winning state championships, all black team. Them white folks still ain't happy. How do you win a state championship? And then they say, well, you did it with black folk. We'd like you to do it with some white folk. You can't win with a white team. They're not good. Unless you get the, if you go get one from Russia, you, you have to do a lot of recruiting to get 12 white boys that can win a state championship. So he too black and too strong getting black folk winning state championships, and that ain't good enough for the white Christian school. Over here, we love Jesus. We just don't want too many niggas playing ball. And we want our kids to play. Look, little Johnny can't play. Little Johnny don't know what little Johnny stinks. Little Johnny should be playing checkers. Little Johnny can't play checkers because checkers is a thinking man game. Little Johnny might want to jump rope because he ain't going to make the team. I'm going to tell y'all something. Everybody's talking about, man, oh boy, got $504 million. A 10-year contract. 
I want to say to y'all, oh, man, somebody got some money that can pay one player $504 million. See, I'm talking about generational wealth. I ain't talking about, and Pastor, wouldn't you want $504 million? Yeah, I would. And I would take that. And, and I watched the ESPN the other day. You know what they said? Too many athletes, and this was code talk, too many athletes want the big money for short contracts. Pretty much what they're saying is we want to play three, four years and make $100 million and chill. But the white man want to sign them and drag them on out. And I'm glad Dak Prescott ain't got his contract. He want to be white so bad. And Jerry's letting you know you are not white. Because you really ain't that good. You can't throw no further than 20, 20 uh, yards. And if Zeke keeps smoking weed, he ain't going to be able to run 80 yards after you throw it to him five yards. But he's sitting there waiting on his money talking, I'm for the team. I'm for the team. Man, you're going to mess around and get about $45,000 a year. <laughs> and a paid vacation, you keep playing. But they got the power to stroke a check and give one player $504 million. How many on that roster? 55 men? 53-team roster. They got 52 more to pay. And y'all so impressed with his 504. Thank God. Uh, what's his name? Maker's brother. Maker. Thom Ma oh, what's his name? McCool Maker. This is what I've been telling y'all. When the black athlete starts going to the HBCU, we'll put the UCLA, the Carolinas, the NC States, the Dukes out of business. This is a five-star player that's going to be one and done that committed to Howard University. You know the reason why you ain't clapping? I heard a brother tell me the other day. I told this brother this. You know the brother said to me, but man, the HBCU, man, we got to get the standards up. I said, boy, you are a Sambo. You can't rejoice for the fact that this five-star athlete is going to a black school, going to the NBA so he's going to be able to give back to the black school. Carolina don't need no more money. Y'all think Michael Jordan's so great. He's giving Carolina money. You ain't doing nothing, Mike. And that $100 million over 10 years, it took LeBron to grow up and become a basketball player to challenge you before you would give $10 million a year. Out there catching fish with white boys. George Floyd getting killed, and he out there fishing with white boys. It ain't time to be shucking and jiving. Out there catching fish with white boys. Something wrong with Mike. Cigar smoking joker. He needs Jesus. I ain't impressed. Everybody said, you watched Last Dance. I already seen him play. I done moved beyond sports. My mindset is so above sports and athletes and all of that stuff. And I'll watch a little bit of it for entertainment. I try to watch the basketball tournament. I said, man, this is straight garbage. I ain't watching this. Man. I watched about five minutes. I said, man, this, I, man I'm getting ready to go. I'm ready to put on uh, my gangster movie. We got a long ways to go, saints. Exodus 20, verse 4 and 5. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. A graven image is an image carved out of stone or wood. Definition, statue. Thou shalt not make any unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything. You're not supposed to make a likeness of your granddaddy, your grandmother. Your heritage. Look what the Bible says. Thou shalt not. God knew way before the earth was designed, before he made it and designed it, he knew we shouldn't be worshiping idols. And I know in the subliminal, because I'm an art major, I know subliminally what will happen to you. Many of you don't know, when you go in the stores, they've got a beat in there. And many times the beat says, buy me, buy me. And it appeals to your subconscious. This is why you can go to Home Depot and you're shopping for, you're shopping for two by four, two by fours. And you ain't thinking about a candy bar until you get to the counter. And eye level, because I know all about advertisement, eye level is a candy bar and a soda. You went in there to get a two by four. You were not thinking about a Coca-Cola and a Snickers. They put it right there. They put it right there. The power of advertisement. And all these statues remind us of is slavery. That's all these statues remind us of, slavery. That's all it reminds us of. What's the purpose of it? When you say history, whose history? 
When you talk about the 4th of July, there were slaves owned in 1776 on the 4th of July. Whose freedom are you celebrating? Are you celebrating a black freedom? Or are you celebrating America's freedom from the Brits? Because you can't talk and say, we, 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 when you, you, you were a slave. We didn't get our freedom from England. Can I get a witness? We still ain't got our freedom now. Can I get a witness? Juneteenth, we still ain't free. Fourth of July, we still ain't free. Can I get a witness? But these statues need to come down. He says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything. That means anything. That is in heaven above. He said, don't make no statues of me. Don't make no statues of Jesus. Don't make no statues of angels. He says, don't make any graven images. And guess what? Don't be funny. Some of y'all say, I didn't make it. I bought it. Don't be funny. Don't buy no graven images either. Let me teach you some of these graven images. I was a mason. I went through, I went through Eureka Lodge number three the oldest lodge in North Carolina, military lodge in Fayetteville. I went through Cumberland Chapter number 70, Royal Arch. I went through Pilgrim's Rest Commandery, Knights Templar. And I went through Kenda 62, the ancient Egyptian Arabic noble of the mystic shrine. And I had a lot of those statues and relics in my apartment. And when I gave my life to the Lord, the Lord said, get rid of them. They carried spirits. I had demons in my house because of these statues and these relics. There's a reason God said don't make no graven images. Because these things become idols. You remember AI? You remember Israel lost to AI? Because God told them to get rid of all of the little gods. And one hid one in the tent. And they lost power. Let me tell you something. People talk about, well, you can make a memorial, this, that, and the other. The only memorial you make is towards God. But these statues are different than a memorial. These statues are wicked idols that God forbids. That rebel flag, if that flag was not an idol, why are white men willing to kill you over it? If that flag is not an idol, why are white men willing to kill you over it? Why are they willing to fly it outside of NASCAR and fly it over the, the, over the uh, race if it's not an idol? Oh, y'all thought I was done because CNN and Fox and MSNBC is done covering the riots. I ain't done. Oh, no, I ain't done. Because I understand way before George Floyd that the Klan marched in Salemburg. In my hometown, the Klan marched in Salemburg. Way before there was a George Floyd. Amen. So these statues need to come down. He says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. He says, You're not to make any graven images. Somebody say, These statues, these Confederate statues need to come down. And, well, Pastor, I don't believe they're talking about statues. Well, Leviticus 26. Verse 1 says, ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image. That means Ulysses S. Grant. That means Sherman. That means the rebel flag. That means all that stuff. You shall make you no idols, nor graven image. Neither rear you up a standing image. Somebody say statue. statue. Ain't that a statue? A carved out graven image that stands? <laughs> Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land. What are statues made of? Stone. To bow down unto them, for I am the Lord your God. God didn't want all these pictures of Jesus and white Jesus. And he didn't want all these pictures of, of white Peter and white John and, and, and white Judas. You know, they, it's amazing. They'll paint Judas black. 
And they'll paint the one that helped Jesus carry the cross black. And then y'all say, it was a black man that helped Jesus carry the cross, not even realizing what you're saying. We got to break that spell, saints. We've been up under a spell. <laughs> a black man, he ain't good for nothing but work. He ain't good for nothing but toting the to 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 cross. How about the man that hung on the cross was a black man? Well, it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. You're right. It don't. You serve a white one. I serve a black one. It don't matter. So leave me alone. If it don't matter, leave me alone. If it don't matter, don't preach about it. If it don't matter, don't say nothing about it. If it don't matter, just let me do what I do. If it don't matter. Amen. We looked at last week that Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 through 14, we saw that Africa we saw that Africa is the cradle of civilization. Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 14. Don't have time to read it tonight. And then we took a dive into Genesis chapter 10, which I want you to turn there now. Genesis chapter 10, and we took a dive into the genealogy of Ham. Noah had three sons, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. He didn't have a white son, a black son, and an Asian son. He had three black sons. And from them came other races. He didn't have a Chinese son. He didn't have a white son and have a black son. It's amazing to me, and the black son is the one that was cursed, according to different white commentaries that black people believe. We're not cursed. I, I, listen, we got white folk in here, but you would not have survived in Africa. You don't have melanin in your skin. And people say, yeah, I do, yeah, I do. No, you don't. That's why you try to get a tan. White America, we born like this. And the climate was made for us. You can say what you want to say. Some things are scientific. Ask Dr. Fauci. You believe him with everything else. Dr. Fauci like, yeah. Y'all thought y'all were firing me. I'm back. Dr. Fauci on every network, he like, yeah. You thought y'all had to come back around and see a brother. Yeah. Dr. Fauci like, yeah, I knew what time it was. I can't, I can't stand the sight of him. And black folk holding on to every word. They holding on to Dr. Fauci's word like it's Jesus. Dr. Fauci said, Dr. Fauci said, Dr. Fauci said, he's a big eared white man. And now all of a sudden the Asians are afraid because they're being discriminated against. The Asians in Cary discriminate against black folk. Now all of a sudden, they want to get together. I got out the other day. An Asian said, like your truck. I'm like, whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> nah, you have discriminated against me, and we're not giving it to just be buddy, buddy. Because soon as, soon as this thing pass over, you'll be right back to your little Asian arrogance. Asians beating up black people all over the world, conquering Africa right now, and you feeling sorry for them. Some of y'all right in here, uh, we, we just, we just going to bind together, and we're going to stay together, yeah, until they open up another store. And you're going to be like, hey, hey, Wong, I thought you were my friend. He's like, I know, I don't want to speak no English. <laughs> Pastor, you're just a racist. I don't have enough money to be racist. Don't have enough money to be racist. Look up the definition of racist. Don't have enough money to be racist. Amen. But we looked at the genealogy of Ham. Ham settled in Africa. You had Sham, Ham, and Japheth. Ham settled in Africa, present-day Africa, as well as present-day Saudi Arabia and islands below Africa. All of this land is the area that Ham settled in. If most people were asked the question, where is Israel? The answer will most likely be that Israel lies in the Middle East. I tell everybody who knows anything about studying to look up the, what Middle East is and tell me what year the term Middle East became a term of acceptance. You're going to find out that it's less than 150 years old. It wasn't the Middle East. All of that land was Africa. All of that land. And I'm going to show you that all of that land was Africa, that all of that land belonged to Ham. I'm going to show you with the word of God. This is why 
excuse me, this is why we don't have to just teach black history, but we got to teach history as it is. Quit making Columbus such a great guy. Quit making George Washington such a great guy. Quit making Benjamin Franklin such a great guy. Quit making Henry Ford such a great guy. You would think by watching the History Channel that black folk didn't do nothing. And the only thing we do now is kill. This is the way we're portrayed. This is why white networks will buy BET and have a black woman booty popping. Because that's what they want to portray us as. They want to portray us as losers, portray us as super predators, as Hillary Clinton said. Want to call us names and don't show us in a good light. But what's wrong with teaching black folk that you are somebody in this Bible? There's, I heard one of the elders, I was watching them yesterday. Y'all probably said, Pastor, who are you talking about? I ain't talking about no elder in the denomination. I'm talking about one of the one of the old black men that has contributed his last 40 plus years to the betterment of black people. He talked about how we've got to change the perception. The perception of us is all wrong. And he talked about sambos. He talked about black people that only dog out black people. He said the problem with these people is they hate themselves. You ever seen black people like that? They find something wrong with black people all the time. There's nothing ever right about us to them. And you look at them and say, man, you black. This is one of the elders broke it down. He said it's because they don't like themselves. He said when you kill another brother, you're committing suicide. He said when you kill another brother, you're committing suicide because you don't like who you are. This is why we have to brainwash our brains with the word of God. We have to move past Willie Lynch, who said it would be 400 years before we get out of this funk of not trusting one another. Why can't we have another black Wall Street if they did it with harder times back then? Oh, let me just teach you something simple. With all the churches, with everybody that's watching me, the people that got their stimulus checks, even in here, if you just said, Pastor, here's my stimulus check. We want to have a meeting after service and figure out what we could do with it. I'm sure there was $100,000 worth of stimulus checks in here. Y'all can get quiet. But if you got a child, your child got something. You got at least 12. Your wife got at least 12. Your children got at least, y'all don't want to tell on yourself. How many does the children get? 500 apiece. 500 apiece. 500. So 12 and 12 and 24, then 500 apiece. But you couldn't wait to spend that money. But you could have taken that money and put it in a stock, a penny stock. Because that's the problem with black folk. When black folk make it, they don't like to share that with nobody else. But look at all that money that just came in the stimulus check that you spent, that you gave right back to the white community, that you gave to the Asian community, that you gave to the Hispanic community. And the only thing you did in the black community, you might have bought a fish sandwich. Because Negroes are going to eat fish and get their hair done. If we don't do nothing else, you open up a fish market and a beauty shop. <laughs> if you <laughs> and, and, and God forbid you throw some fried wings in there. Man, I used to always love playing against Trinity. Trinity was Elder Darn's toughest opponents, I would say. It's like a rivalry game in Fayetteville. But Trinity was different than Village. You go to Trinity. Uh, you, you know, you go to Village. You go to these schools around here, you go to Fuquay, you go to um, um, Broughton, you go to Daniels, you get a popcorn and a soda. You go to Trinity, them jokers cooking fried chicken, fish, french fries, ketchup, hot sauce. You go to that game and get full. Amy, I'll be like, Amy, what you want? Because we know we're going to watch some ball, and I go and get my fries, get my grease and everything, and got to flush it down with a cold Coca-Cola. <laughs> you give a black man some fried fish, some fried chicken, open up the barbershop and the beauty shop, because I made a killing. I made so much money cut to have people say he's a drug dealer. I'm not lying. They said, that boy's selling drugs. I worked 12 hours a day, six days a week. That was my life, working for myself. Six days a week, Monday through Saturday, 12 hours a day. That was just regular hours. That won't include whenever certain people came after hours. Say, look, man, go on and shake me up for $100. I'm like, you mean to tell me you just want me to line you up for $100, brother? 
That's how you pop that chair. Sit down. Hey, man, what's up, man? I was tired. But all of a sudden, yeah, man, it's crazy out here, man. Yeah, I got you right. Hey, how that player? All right, man. Hey, look, I'll holler at you. Hey, June, get that door, man. Walking out there, your last cut, you get $100 back in 92. I'll teach all of you how to have a business. Have your own. And this is what we got to teach. You can't keep teaching. Go to college, get a good job. Go to college. If you want to get a job, you work for somebody, get a little experience, but open up your own. God bless the child that has his own. If all the black athletes would go to HBCUs and then let me or Elder Darden manage the money, then you just created two people that can handle the kids' money and their future. Instead of going to UCLA, Carolina, everybody wants to go to Duke, Carolina, NC State, um, um, Georgia Tech, Clemson, and, but you look over, overlook Hampton. You overlook Hampton. You overlook Central. You overlook Fayetteville State. You overlook St. All. Well, man, this raggedy over there. Well, you know what? If we all collectively went, we could clean it up. We don't think that way. We don't think that way. We don't think that way. We don't think empowerment. And the people that have made it, the problem with black folk is you don't want to reach back. And we have a Lord over you spirit. We want a Lord over you. When we make it, we feel like we're better than you. And we say things like, you not putting forth an effort. Man, I built this doggone country. Effort. You don't put more effort towards nothing than building it for free. Let's get into this now. Let's get into this. Ham. Ham settled in Africa. And like I said, if you ask anybody where uh, uh, Israel is, the majority of people will say in the Middle East. They don't even understand that old Israel, old before it was Middle East, was all considered Africa. Until they built the Suez Canal. Look at the Suez Canal. Pay attention to the maps. And you will see that from the Red Sea all the way to the top, the canal splits the continent. That was intention. It wasn't just about trade route. It was to separate. Look how they talk about Egypt. Look how they talk about Libya as if it's not a part of Africa. Look how they talk about Israel. But you, if you say something about Ethiopia, everybody know they're black. But Ham had four sons. His four sons were Mizraim, which is Egypt. He had another son named Phut, P-H-U-T, which is Libya. He had another son named Cush, which, which is Ethiopia. And he had another son named Canaan, which is Israel. Now, are you telling me that Phut, Mizram, and Cush were black, but Canaan was a Jew and he was lighter? Ham had four sons. Egypt, Mizram, Libya, Foot, Ethiopia, Cush, Canaan, Israel. Now, if you were to look at a map, and I should have told you to cue it up, but if you were to look at a map, and can you zoom in on this a little bit for me? If you were to look at a map, if you look at this map right here, can we get a little bit closer? We can't get no closer, can we? It's okay. It's okay. But I want you to see all that. This is foot. This is Libya, the top of Africa. This is Mizram, which is Egypt. This is Cush, which is Ethiopia. And look right across the Red Sea, which it was connected before the Suez Canal. That's Canaan, which is his fourth son, which is Israel. Look at the map. And guess what? Canaan stretched from Sidon all the way to the Gaza Strip, according to the word of God. I'm going to show you in the word. It stretched from Sidon, which is Samaria, all the way down to the Gaza Strip. Now, why is Ham's son, Canaan, not called black? Like his brothers, Ethiopia and Egypt. There ain't nobody in here. There ain't no way two black people in here can make four different colors. You can make four different shades. But you can't have a white child, a black child, an Indian, and an Asian child from two black folk. There ain't no way living. 
And, and blackness is so strong, sometimes you have two brown-skinned people and the baby be darker than both of them. All you got to do is look back at the granddad of the mama. They say, where did they get that blackness from? You have old black granddaddy? Old greasy black grandmother? And then black is just looked upon, frowned upon. Have y'all watched, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to go back again, because I know I got one person in here who watched it, but nobody else. You see, you see Green Leaf episode last night? <laughs> the white woman done took the preacher. And made her arms about this big. And then he got the sister. And the sister walking around like, mm-hmm. You won't never touch this no more. And then it, it was time for them to pray. And he said, go ahead and pray. So, so the black man, he's a slave. He had to remarry the white woman in order to get the white church because her white daddy controls everything. So he loves the sister, but he wanted to be a pastor for the last 25 years, so he did what he had to do. And he was sitting there praying. He said, go ahead and pray. And she said, hi, Father. And they just show him shaking his head like, man, I need this sister in here. Greenleaf is good. I advise all of you to watch it. You learn the good and the bad about church, mostly the bad. You learn mostly the bad. Pastor, I can't believe you're watching Greenleaf. Surely is. Surely is. Every episode. I thought you were a man of God. I am a man of God that watches Greenleaf. And I love the bishop. Now, I don't like his drinking. They made him mad. He cussed on his last episode. But, I mean, I know cussing preachers. It ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't like I had to watch TV to hear cussing preachers. I'm not one, but I know some that'll cuss you out. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. So, Ham, let's go. If you look at Genesis chapter 10, the Bible says in verse 6 of Genesis chapter 10, Verse 1 says, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Then if you look at verse 6, it talks about Ham and the sons of Ham. And the reason I'm talking about this is because one of Ham's sons' name is Cush, which is Ethiopia. And the other son's name is uh, Mizram, which is Egypt. And Psalm 68 and 31 says, princes shall come out of Egypt, and Ethiopia shall soon stretch forth her hand. This is why I'm tying it in together. Because Cush, Ethiopia, and Mizram, y'all probably say he repeats himself a lot. That's the way I learn. I teach the way that I learn. And I believe re repetition. And you didn't even know that the black mind learns different than the white mind. No, I'm telling you, educators will tell you that. We learn from repetition. They don't learn from repetition like us. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm telling you what I know. We talk different. We have a thick tongue. We're made different. Well, Pastor, what about the interracial couples? Love who you love. Love the one you with. White man want to marry a black woman. Black man want to marry a white woman. Black man want to marry Asian. Asian want to marry Chinese. Chinese want to marry any. Marry what you want to marry. I know. I said Asian want to marry Chinese. That's two Asians. Don't y'all judge me now. Y'all sitting there talking about Pastor, Asian and Chinese. Now, that's, now you can catch that little mistake. She ain't heard nothing. Yeah, y'all were sitting there, Pastor, Asian, Chinese, the same people. <laughs> yeah, I felt you. And the sons of Ham, verse 6, and the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizram, Ethiopia, and Egypt, and Phut, Libya, and Canaan, Israel. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah. Havilah, if you go back to Genesis chapter 2, the whole land of Havilah is where Adam was created. Because remember we talked about it last week in Genesis chapter 2, in the land of Havilah, the river, the Tigris, the Euphrates, the Gihon, and the Pison, all the, and the Euphrates, all of these rivers encompassed the land of Havilah and one went out into four heads. Oh, man, it's good teaching here. It's good teaching here. You ought to be proud of yourself. And I want to jump down real quick. Check it out because they try to treat Canaan. Try to treat Canaan, which is Israel, and when you see Netanyahu and when you see the Republican presidents, they are friends of Israel. They ain't friends of real Israel because real Israel ain't white. And it ain't like these Republican presidents are so holy that they're trying to protect Israel. They're trying to protect their best interests because Israel strategically needs, needs to be our ally because of the oil and everything else that's over there. Oh, I'm talking good. It ain't like these Republican presidents are so Christian-fied. Notice I didn't say saved. I said Christian-fied. 
Pastor, there ain't no such a word. It is, because I said it is. Christian, F-I-E-D, Christian five. But all of a sudden, they love God so much. It ain't nothing about loving God because it ain't real Israel. Because look at here now, you got, you got Cana, you got Foot, you got Mizram, and you got Cush. Look what 19 says, verse 19. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon. Sidon on this map, if you were to look at it, Sidon is way up here above Canaan, pretty much where you see the E is, all the way down to the Gaza Strip. Oh, I done studied the biblical maps. I done studied the modern maps. I've studied all the maps, and I did this a long time ago. A lot of it I did before I even gave my life to the Lord. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon as thou comest to Gera unto Gaza. Now, how is it that the other three brothers settled on an area that we present day call Africa, but the other brother is a whole different color, a whole different group of people, and he's in Canaan because all of it was connected. Start studying your maps. And don't even trust all these biblical maps because they'll tell you what they want to tell you just like some of these commentaries won't tell you the truth. But, Pastor, what are some of your commentaries? When we have medicine's class again, I'll show you some of them. I ain't going to show you all of them. But I don't trust a lot of these commentaries because they have been famous for keeping black people out. And when you look at the number that's been done on us, from Bull Connor's uh, our dogs to, to, to Willie Lynch to slavery to the civil rights movement, to the Reconstruction era, when you look at all this, to us making our own way and then it being bombed and destroyed, and people wonder why we can't get ahead. And now that we're trying to get ahead after the death of all these people, now you got white folk hijacking the movement, tearing stuff up. You got faggots and dykes hijacking the movement, tearing stuff up. You got brown folk hijacking the movement. You got uh, Asians talking about, I'm experiencing racism. Go back to China. In the words of the Republican president, Donald Trump. He said it. Y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. But you see the border of Canaan from Sidon to Gaza. Why is that not treated as a black land? Well, you want to know? I'm glad you asked. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 11, talking about the prophecy of God using black people. And guess what? Some people say, oh, he's taking that scripture out of context. So you mean to tell me there ain't no scripture in the Bible that, that, that um, prophesies about the use of black people? See, even black people say, man, that's too deep, man. You can't teach that. You're teaching hate. But everything else is white. So you got, you, got you got to go home. Some of y'all, you, you ain't got to just wash your brain. Some of y'all need to go home tonight and stand at the wall in your bedroom and just bust your head on the wall. <laughs> Knock yourself out and say, Lord, when you come back, you have amnesia. And then somebody teach you that it's okay to be black. There's been a number done on us because I'm teaching this and I can already hear somebody saying, now, Doc, that ain't what the scriptures say. Well, now, Doc, so you're telling me from Genesis to Revelation, just talk about white folk. See, we have to be careful. We are so warped in our thinking. This is why I don't have a problem with a black man until he crossed me because I see him as me. And I know he went through some. This is why every time I see an old black man, I always put some in his hand. I always put some in an old woman's hand because I know they went through something. We got to quit hating one another. And I'm not following in the Fox News showing black on black crime. I want to see the white on white crime because, after all, we're a minority. So it can't be more of us killing each other than them. Can't, it ain't possible. But they show three black people dying on Fox News. And they got the ugliest white women on Fox News I ever seen. No, I can't. I don't know. They got some ugly ones on CNN, too. Ooh, doggy. 
hard on the eye. Look at him, you'd be like, oh, I'm trying to watch this news. Oh, shit. Oh, jeez. What you say? Oh, coronavirus. Oh, oh. Let me try again. Oh, oh, oh. Just hard to watch. Just do something in the house. Just walk and do something. Sweep or something. Just can't watch it. It's ugly. <laughs> Y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. Look at Isaiah 11, starting at verse 11. Look what it says. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover. What what does that mean? He shall set his hand again. That means he did it before. A second time means he did it the first time. To recover. Recover means something that has already been done. So you see three, I don't know what you would call it in English class, but you see three of these strong statements stretch his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush. Now let me go on and tell you, because of the diaspora, this is not talking about a physical place now. Y'all follow me? Because I'm going to tell you about the diaspora. Because, you know, there's a lot of English black people that understand about the diaspora. Black people are strode. You know, there's a word really called strode. We use it in the country. But there's black people are strode all over the nation, all over the world. So when it says Egypt now, it's not talking about the physical Egypt. It's talking about the sons of Ham. Because we're strolled all over the place. Pastor, I don't agree with that. Watch this. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar. Shinar in the desert, the Sudan area. (laughs) Study your map. Study your word. Sudan are the blackest people in the world. I had a whole tribe of people I used to cut from the Sudan. Their skin was so black, it didn't even look like skin. And they had tribal marks. And some of them are still in Fuquay now. Blacker than black. Beyond a Crayola black. A beautiful black. I'll never forget when we went to uh, VMI where Adrian played. We were sitting down. And there were some Ethiopian people, no, Sudanese, weren't they? They had the prettiest skin. And me and my wife were sitting beside them. We looked at them. They have no pimples or nothing. Skin was black, perfect. There ain't a person in here. The darkest ones in here, if we put y'all together and multiply you, you still like skin. They were blacker than black. And skin was beautiful. But we talked that that's ugly. We talked that's ugly. And then every time I turn around, we got, what's the name? What's the name? Something Gardner. What's the name? Jennifer Gardner. Ah, one more thing. I'm so sick of seeing her. She don't represent beauty. Ah, and one more thing. <laughs> Y'all don't like me in here. Y'all don't like me in here. You know what? You know the reason why you don't like me? Because that's your acceptance of beauty. Because they made black people accept that. If a sister a little thick, something wrong with that. Now, I ain't going to get you brothers in trouble, but brothers, you like a little thickness. I can't believe you Negroes ain't going to say nothing. I can't believe you hypocrites up in here. Oh, so you want your wife to be like Jennifer Gardner. You want your wife to be so thin that when you blow, she fall right over. Listen, listen. A sister's beautiful. That ain't no shade on the white ladies in here. I'm talking about the sister's beautiful. And I know some brothers that just dog out sisters. We got this dude at the gym that work out with us. He's a doctor. Hey, man, when you go to your church, man, tell some of your sisters to move some of that so-and-so. They're too big around the so-and-so, and they're too big around the so-and-so. I said, yep, you can't handle a sister. <laughs> what you telling me, Negro, is you ain't built to handle a sister. 
Every time he turned around, he tell him, you go tell your church, quit eating the ham hocks. And I said, man, you're very derogatory. You know, and you ain't no good looking dude yourself, you little skinhead joker. Just dogging the sisters out. I'm like, bro, I ain't, listen, listen, I like little hips and thighs. I told Amy, I said, girl, you fat. She said, Dwan, I'm trying to lose weight. I said, girl, I'm talking about P-H-A-T. Plenty of hips and thighs. Y'all don't know what, y'all don't hear me. P-H-A-T, girl. I ain't say F-A-T. I said P-H-A-T. Pastor, this is going too far. Well, I'm going to go farther. <laughs> I ain't studying y'all. Woo! <laughs> Let me get back. See, I start thinking about more. I'm sorry, y'all. Amy was losing weight one time. I said, hold, 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 hold up now. You, you don't know what you should. You don't lose too much. I like to be able to hold on. You know, the song said, be sure. Have mercy. I got to get back to the Bible. She did something a while ago before she came to church. I said, can you get this for me? And uh, I can't even tell you, but she did something. She found this for me. I said, all right now. But then we had to come to church. So it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left. And from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign, a sign for the nations and shall assemble, listen, the outcasts of Israel. He didn't say present day Israel. The outcasts, the people who have been scattered, the diaspora. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, the outcast of Canaan, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Anybody want to elaborate on that? Anybody want to challenge me on that? Black folk from all over, God's going to gather, and he's going to use us. And he says who we are, Egypt, Mizraim. And no, I'm not no Israelite. I'm not no, no black Israelite. There's none of that teaching. I don't agree with none of that. But I'm a black man who knows what the Bible says. You ain't got to be a Muslim. You ain't got to be a new Hebrew. You ain't got to be a black Israelite to know this. I'm going to show you one more passage of scripture, and then I might read something to you real quick, and we're going we're gonna to close tonight. Look at Isaiah 19. Verse 22, we're still talking about princes shall come out of Egypt. And Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Princes shall come out of Mizraim. And Cush shall soon stretch her hands unto God. Black folk, at the end of the day, before I close, I want to say this as my closing statement before I close, because I don't want to forget it. The answer to our problems is to stretch our black hands to the Lord. Because let me tell you something about being a minority. How many battles did they win in the Bible being a minority? Name one of them, Gideon. Name another, AI beat Israel because of the disobedience. Numbers don't mean nothing. Well, Pastor, you talking about a race war? No, I'm talking about winning in America. I'm talking about achieving in America. I'm talking about we don't have to keep taking the mistreatment if we put God first. Do you hear what I'm saying? If we put God first, if we put God first, he'll open up land for you that white folk don't want you to have. He'll let a white man die and let his wife that don't care nothing about being from Salemburg sell a Negro land that has been held from black people for hundreds of years. You better wake up. You better wake up and quit whining about being black and realize who you are and realize that you're God's chosen people and realize that if we serve him, ain't no devil in hell can stop us. Embrace who you are. Embrace being a black man. Embrace being a black woman. Embrace everything you're going through and say, Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. 
No other help I know. Tell the Lord and he'll do it for you. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he will. He'll open up doors for you. He'll open up doors that can't nobody shut. He'll shut doors that nobody can. I feel like preaching. He'll shut doors that nobody can open. He will make the crooked way straight. He'll make it plain for you if you just stretch your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm here. Lord, use me in these last days. Lord, I've been mistreated. Lord, I've been done wrong. But I know if I serve you, everything is going to be all right. Commit your children unto God. Commit your way unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Good Lord, roll your ideas unto God. Now is not the time to pull back. But now is the time to say, God, you said you were going to use me. Lord, I want to be used in these last days. You said you were going to use me. Lord, I want to be used. Anybody here want to be used? Anybody want to be used by God? You ought to tell the Lord, Lord, I want to be used. Lord, Lord, I'm not going to make an excuse. Lord, I've been done wrong, but I want to be used by you in these last and evil days. Lord, bless my children. I want to be a good man and leave an inheritance for my children's children. I want to bring my children up in the admonition of the Lord. Teach them the fear of God and let them know you might be a minority. You might be judged by the color of your skin, but if you just stretch your hands to God, the Lord will make a way. The Lord will make a way. Y'all have a black pastor who's proud to be black. I ain't going to mistreat nobody, but I'm going to save my people. I'm going to give all I got before I leave this earth. When I die, I'm going to die empty. People can misconstrue everything I'm saying and twist it all you want. But God has anointed me in these last days to help you. God has given me power. And ain't no devil in hell can stop what God is doing. In the middle of a pandemic, we're getting ready to build again. In the middle of a pandemic, people have getting healed, delivered, and set free. What a mighty God we serve. You, you want to watch me on YouTube to get some good information? Well, I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, ain't no devil in hell can stop me. You can't stop me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, we might as well go there for a few minutes because I feel my help coming. Somebody ought to just wave your hands and give God praise in here. Every time the devil attacks me I go for broke and give him all that I know right now I need the Lord to be my battle axe in the time of trouble is there anybody in here you're in a little bit of trouble and you need the Lord to bring you out stretch your hands to the most high God stretch your hands to Jehovah Sabaoth and he will Yes, he will. He'll fight for you. He'll give you the victory. He won't let you have egg on your face, but he will bring you out. Is there anybody in here? You don't know how you're going to make it. You heard the word Sunday, but it seems like your time has not come. Well, I'm here to tell you, saints of God and friends of mine, that your time is now. This is what happens when you mess with a giant. This is what happens when you mess with a warrior. The warrior, it comes out. I know how to pray. I know how to lift my hands. I know how to say, God, take care of my enemies. You came one way. You're going to leave seven ways. I want to tell you, you better leave. You better leave. You better leave me alone because I got power, power, power to come up against any devil in hell. Mm. Ethiopia, stretch forth your hands. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia, stretch forth your hands. Ethiopia, Lift your hands unto God. Cush, black folk, black skin. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I need you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. The devil thought he had me, Melvin. The devil thought he had me. But I prayed. I prayed. And the Lord spoke to me and said, keep your mind stayed on me. I wanted to get in the flesh. But the Lord says, keep your eyes stayed on me. I blessed you over and over, over and over, and over and over, and over again, over again, over again. Yeah. What are you doing, Pastor? I'm sending praise. What are you doing, Pastor? I'm sending Judah. I'm sending Judah to go out and fight for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to just give him praise. Act like it's a revival. Act like it's Sunday morning. The Lord says don't wait uh, to Sunday morning, uh, but give him praise right now. Uh, give him glory right now. Uh, ain't no devil uh, in hell. Uh, ain't no devil uh, on this earth uh, can stop you uh, because you got power. Uh, you ought to just find a neighbor and look him dead in the eye and say, neighbor, uh, do you know you got power? Power! Oh! Power! 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 Keep on messing with me, and the Lord is going to keep on blessing me. Keep on messing with me, and the Lord is going to keep on blessing me. Keep on messing with me, and keep pushing me up. Keep on bothering me, and keep on pushing me up. Great! the name of this church, Victory Temple, because no matter what battles we go through, the Lord has given us power to win, power to defeat the enemy, power to overcome, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. your battle. Is there anybody in here? You need God to fight your battle. What well, tonight is, uh, if you'll stretch your black hands uh, and stretch your white hands and stretch your brown hands uh, to heaven and say, Lord, I can't fight uh, my own battle, uh, but I need you, uh, Jehovah Sabaoth. Uh, I need you now to stand in the gap fight for me. And I hear the Lord says, the battle is not yours, but it's mine. And I've never lost. I've never had a close fight. I've never went to a decision. But all my fights ended in the first round by way of knockout. Give him praise. Give him praise. Sunday morning, praise and worship, but give him praise, give him praise. You better go on and shout and praise him. On this Wednesday night, you better go on and shout and praise
give the Lord a hand praise. Give the Lord a praise. Give him a wave. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever. And I thank God for his glory falling in this place. He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. I just want you to remember this one thing. We are a minority. But that does not matter if we stretch our hands back to God. Do you hear what I'm telling you? If we learn to work together and stretch our hands unto God, everything will be all right. I want to pray for this church during these threats that might be true, might not be true. But I just want to pray for everybody's protection. God, watch over every person in this place. Watch over every member that's not even here tonight. Protect us, oh God. Keep us from the hand of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen us, oh God. Watch over our boys. Watch over our girls. Watch over our wives. Watch over us, oh God. And keep us. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.